Hey friends, welcome back to the Bald Booktuber. My name is Scott. Today we are going to do an update to my favorite narrator of all time list. We're going to do a top 15 because uh, I couldn't settle on just 10. These are, are people that I've listened to, in many cases, several audiobooks from, some it's just two or three. Let's go ahead and get started here. We'll talk about some of the great things I've already listened to that they have narrated, as well as some of the things that they are perhaps known for uh, that I haven't gotten to yet. So here we go. At number 15, we have Colin Mace. I know him from the Bloodsworn Saga uh, by John Gwynn. We have two books so far, Shadow of the Gods and Hunger of the Gods. And he is obviously the narrator for both. Um, he has sort of a really deep baritone type of sound to his voice. And I really like the way he does like Viking names and, and so forth. So uh, I really enjoy his narration of that series. And it adds something uh, super special to that series for me. Um, I've tried reading the books without his audio accompaniment. And it's just not the same. A couple things that he does that I am most interested in are the Raven Cry trilogy by Ed McDonald, uh, starting with, I think it's called Blackwing. Uh, that looks like a cool series, and he does the narration for that. And he did a narration for book 10 only of Janie Wirtz's Light and Shadow, War of Light and Shadow. That's the only book that has an audiobook narration thus far. So I'm hopeful that they'll go back and have him record audiobooks for the preceding nine books in that series. That would be really good if he were the dedicated reader for that series. It would make me jump it ahead of the line uh, considerably and get to it very, very fast. At number 14, we have Michael Page. He came up a couple of times on my top 10 11 uh, book series, fantasy book series video yesterday, and he is primarily known for those. He has done, of course, the Gentleman Bastard sequence in which he is perfectly suited. He has also done the latter seven books in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series, uh, for which he did quite a nice job. I prefer Ralph Lister in those first three books, but he did quite a nice job. Uh, Page also did two or three, I think just two of the standalones of First Law before they brought Pacey back to re-record them. And those are quite good narrations. I still have them in my library. I still like to, you know, listen to them once in a while, but obviously uh, not not at the level of the master, but, uh, but quite good in any case. It was difficult to find other stuff that Page is known for that I'm interested in, but... He did do a recording uh, for Don Quixote, and that's a book I've never read, so um, feels like one of those books that it would have been cool to have read it. So at some point, maybe I'll get to it, and if I do, I will have his audiobook narration as an accompaniment. At number 13, we have Simon Preble, and Preble is an 80-year-old Englishman uh, with a lot of range and does a ton of different stuff. Um... I most enjoy his take on Sherlock Holmes. I have listened to several of the short stories uh, with respect to Holmes with his narration specifically. And so that's some of my favorite. The series that I'm most looking forward to when it comes to Preble, and I'm probably going to be buddy reading this this year with Kyle over Read by Kyle, is the Raven series by Giles Christian. This is... Um, if I'm not mixing my series up, this is sort of a Viking-inspired uh, type of series, historical fiction, I believe set in the 15th century, maybe the 16th century. I should have looked before I started filming. Uh, but uh, Preble does the narration on that as well, and I'm sure it is fantastic. Um, he also, Preble does a lot of classics and so forth, so um, he's a name that turns up a fair amount. Uh, I just love his voice. At number 12, we've got James Langton, and he is somebody that kind of falls under the umbrella of, I wish he did more stuff. Uh, he won't be the last person on this list that I'll put in that category. Um, he does the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb, uh, one of my all-time favorite trilogies, and he is masterful at it. Uh, I am rereading Fool's Errand right now, 
and returning to his narration has been just outstanding. Um, in a few months, I will be up to the point where I'll be rereading Dark Age by Pierce Brown. That's book five of Red Rising, and Langton is also on that. So I'm looking forward to his narration parts on that book that has sort of an ensemble cast. Not huge ensemble, but like five or six voice narrator so he's one of them for one of the povs and i really enjoyed that as well he does the first couple books in the necroscope series but then it goes to other narrators so i don't want to get too uh invested in that but uh it's a vampire um sort of horror series i've heard good things if i want to do an entire series that features just him uh, the predane chronicles might be the way to go uh lloyd alexander that is sort of competes with Narnia and other stories as some of people's most formative and earliest fiction tales. So uh, if at some point I want to revisit that story, I know that I have Mr. Langton there uh, to guide me through it. Number 11 was new for me this year, and he made a really serious push to be in the top 10, uh, but is just outside of it, obviously, and that's Eduardo Ballerini. He does the Matthew Corbett mystery series, and he is exceptional. If you've listened to any of my wrap-ups throughout the year, you've probably heard me talking and gushing about this man. Uh, I just absolutely love his narration. Um, Andrew over to Andrew's Wizardly Reads recently did a video about uh, audiobooks that are perfect to listen to immersively, and he mentioned the Corbett series as one of them, with, of course, Ballerini doing the narration, and I can only agree that is fantastic and a great experience. There are a couple things that I would be excited uh, to listen to from him outside of Matthew Corbett. One of them is he does a narration for Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, uh, which I haven't read since high school, but remember absolutely loving. Um, sort of a American transcendental philosophy in the form of uh, poetry. And Whitman had an unusual form of poetry, but it, it really was something that I enjoyed um, when I read it the first time. So I wouldn't mind revisiting that. Also, um, he is one of the main voice actors on a book called The Lincoln Highway, which is a book I would like to get to, uh, particularly for the voice narrators on it. Uh, Obviously, Ballerini's one, and the other one uh, we'll see later on in this list. Number 10 is Nick Padell, and Nick Padell probably deserves to be higher on this list. He is outstanding, and he does the King Killer Chronicles, or at least the two primary books in the series, Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear, and I really feel like he elevates that series with his narration. So I've been listening and re-listening to those audiobooks for... A long time. Uh, I'm due for a new re-listen. It's been a while. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoy what he does with that story. In terms of something that he does that I haven't gotten to yet, but is relatively high on my TBR, and I've talked about it recently in fantasy series I want to get to, Melissa McPhail's uh, Pattern of Shadow and Light uh, is another series that he narrated, um, which only serves to make me want to read that even more. So the only person I know that's read it so far is my buddy RJ over at RJ Reads, and he is enjoying it quite a bit. Number nine is another new for me author this year, and um, I made kind of indirect mention of her earlier, and that's Marin Ireland. And she does a lot of Frederick Bachman's work. Um, so in particular, what I've listened to from her so far is Anxious People, and the Beartown Trilogy. Uh, she did those four books, uh, and I love her narration on all of them. She is outstanding. Doesn't matter if it's a male or a female voice, she nails it. Um, I think she has great range to her vocals, and she really makes, at least for me, um, all of those emotional moments that Bachman is so known for hit even harder, uh, which to me is the sign of a very good narrator couple of the things that she also narrates that I'd like to get to. Uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. That is an author and a book that I am interested in getting to hopefully this year. Uh, he also won the Pulitzer Prize in literature, I think, for a different book than that one. Uh, All the Light We Cannot See or something of that nature. 
Uh, so it's an author that I'm interested in seeing uh, what he is up to. Uh, also somebody uh, that is offered as an author I should get to if I like Frederick Bachman. I obviously do. So she does that one, and she also is on, along with Eduardo Ballerini, uh, is on the uh, the Lincoln Highway. So uh, with the two of them, that has to be one of the best audiobooks I will ever listen to. Number eight is Ray Porter, who does so many things I love. He is just fantastic. Much of what he does is in either the thriller or the sci-fi genre, but certainly he could do any genre. Um, just outstanding. He does the Terminalist series by Jack Carr. I really think he elevates the character in the series. Uh, I think that is fantastic. He does the Bobaverse uh, series, which is a sci-fi series that I really enjoy. A lot of humor, and Ray Porter makes it better. And of course, and maybe most famously, I'm not really sure, he did the audiobook for Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Um, which just elevated that book to an, an insane level for me. Uh, it was one of my favorite books in 2021, largely on the back of what he did with the narration. Um, that book won an Audi, uh, which is sort of the Oscars of audiobook narration, uh, if we look at it that way. So um, if you are considering getting into Andy Weir and or Project Hail Mary as a book, make sure you do the audiobook at least as a companion to it because uh it just makes everything so much better uh with that story to have porter's narration with porter does a ton of narration outside of those and a lot of it i haven't gotten to but uh porter does a lot of robert mccammon and his early books so there's a good chance i will cross his path on some of those as i get to them he also does a large uh, amount of Arthur C. Clarke and uh, Clarke's early sci-fi. So um, good chance I'll get to those at some point. I don't know when that'll be, but uh, I've never read Arthur C. Clarke and I probably should. So hopefully I'll have Ray there to read it along to me as well. Number seven is the legendary actor and now legendary voice actor Andy Serkis. Of course, he has done all of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. He's currently uh, re-recording the Cimmerillion, so I can't wait for that. He, of course, played Gollum in the movies. I'm a massive Andy Serkis fan. I think his narration is absolutely brilliant. When you're listening to The Hobbit and or Lord of the Rings, he's really taking on each of the characters. So when he's reading a Gandalf line, it really sounds like Ian McClellan doing a Gandalf line. It's crazy. Uh, so uh, highly encourage those audiobooks. I love the initial ones by Rob Inglis as well, but they don't hold a candle to anything that Circus has done. So he just uh, takes one of my all-time favorite series and somehow makes it even more enjoyable, which is quite a feat. A couple things I'd like to get to, they are doing kind of ensemble cast recordings of the Sandman graphic novel, which I watched the show this year and quite liked it. I've never read the graphic novel, but I would kind of like to listen to these ensemble casts, and he's on the first one as one of the voices, which is cool. He is also doing um, one of the individuals that's that's doing re-recordings of Discworld by Terry Pratchett, which I've not really enjoyed uh, what I have attempted so far, but uh, I still want to give it another chance. He does Small Gods, um, and I think that is part of a, you know, three or four person cast as well. So it's not solely him, uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that's a good audio book with any amount of Andy Circus in it. So I'm going to give that a shot at some point. Number six, and also new to the list this year, is Jonathan Keeble, uh, another Englishman here. He does the Warlord Chronicles, which I am currently reading through. His narration on Winter King was spectacular, as I knew that it would be. I had listened to samples, but I really think he is just a perfect fit and perfect voice for that type of historical fiction. Um, so I am enjoying his narrating quite a lot. He's done a fair amount of other Bernard Cornwell books, uh, including some of the uh, Saxon tales, so I will cross paths with him on some of those. I also have a couple of audiobook collections that I grabbed recently because of his narration. I've got uh, Edgar Allan Poe, The Complete Stories, 
and Edgar Allan Poe, The Complete Works. So the stories is just the short stories. The works includes poetry and essays and other things. And Keeble narrates all of it. So I'm excited to get to a lot of that. Maybe I can make that a priority in October this year to uh, revisit some old classics with Edgar Allan Poe. All right, top five time. And number five is a heavy hitter if I've ever seen one. And that is my guy, Samuel Rukin. And he does the Magnificent Sun Eater series. He is the perfect fit for Hadrian Marlowe and that series in general. I really, really am enjoying uh, his narration. And I miss it when a new book comes out uh, and it's available to me early, but the narration is not available yet. So, um I could put on any Sun Eater book with him narrating at any time and just enjoy his narration. And that's a sign of a very good uh, audiobook narrator, in my opinion. Um, there are some criticisms leveled at him with how he pronounces things. Uh, Rocchio himself has confirmed that some of the pronunciations that Rukin uses are just wrong. And, you know, I love it anyway. So... Uh, I am known as a guy that mispronounces things stubbornly, so I can't be mad when somebody else does the same. The other big project that Rukin is tackling right now, besides Sun Eater, and something I do want to get to, uh, Michael Moorcock is releasing all of the Elric stuff in bound volumes, and the audiobooks are done by Rukin for that Elric um, lineup of books. I think there are four of them out on hardcover now, if I'm not mistaken and Rukin is doing the narrations for each of them. So uh, makes me want to prioritize that as well. Obviously, I have a ton of stuff to read already, but I really want to get to those. All right, we are to number four, and that is my guy, Simon Vance. And Simon Vance is a 67-year-old Englishman who has won multiple Audi Awards. He is very well thought of in the Audible and audiobook in general community. He's someone who I love and have listened to a smattering of different stuff from. Uh, I have listened to his take on Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. I've listened to him in various roles in Dune. I've listened to him doing George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. And I've listened to him doing The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. He does that entire Millennium Trilogy, but I've only listened to slash read the first book of it, uh, which I quite liked. And his narration was definitely on point. I have a lot of stuff to get to with Simon Vance. Primarily, a lot of Guy Gabriel Kay's work has been done by Simon Vance, which is great. Uh, Simon Vance also did Gormagast Trilogy, so that's something to look forward to for sure. And he did one of the myriad recordings of Sherlock Holmes. He did the complete Sherlock Holmes as well, so there's a good chance I'll get to that as well. Uh, obviously, I'm enjoying the Preble narration, as I mentioned earlier, but I can only imagine Simon Vance is incredible as Sherlock and Watson, etc. So uh, that is something to get to as well. So lots of Vance uh, in my future, which I am excited about. Number three is Tim Gerard Reynolds, uh, lovingly referred to as TGR. He does, uh, at least in terms of what I've listened to thus far, uh, all of the Red Rising series. He is the lone narrator on the first trilogy, and he's part of an ensemble cast in books four, five, and beyond. I'm assuming he'll be uh, in Lightbringer as well, playing the role of Darrow. So I am excited about that audiobook forthcoming. Um, he also does Brian Lee Durfee's Five Warrior Angels, and I think he's exceptional for that part. Uh, I was disappointed to see that the audiobook for The Lonesome Crown, the final book, is delayed until at least May. Um, once it is here, I will for sure be listening to it as sort of a reread of the read that I did to finish up that outstanding series. TGR also does all of Michael Sullivan's stuff, so all of the Ryuria, uh, of which I've only listened to the first couple and quite enjoyed his narration. He does a ton of stuff, but the biggest one priority-wise for me is Saga of the Forgotten Warrior by Larry Correa. This is a series uh, that has book four coming out shortly uh, this year, and it's a series that my buddy Brent has been trying to get me to read, as well as Madison, uh, for a, over a year now. So I need to get to it. I need to prioritize it. TGR reads it. Um, needs to be done.
If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you probably know what number two and number one are. So I won't keep you in a ton of suspense, but number two is James Marsters. And he does the Dresden Files. He is exceptional at it. It is a little bit of a one trick pony for him uh, because there's not really other stuff he has done. Uh, and there's not really stuff that he's done that I care to listen to. I, I try to do some research. Uh, the one that I had heard of that he's done is one of the parts with The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, which is not something I'm interested in at present. Uh, I think he also has a part uh, in one of the Macbeth uh, audio tellings, but it was part of a huge ensemble cast. So realistically, his thing is uh, Dresden Files, which is fine because nobody, nobody could have possibly done anything better with Dresden Files than what he's done. Uh, part of the charm of that series for me is I can put on any Dresden audiobook at any time and just be happy I'm listening to Marsters. He's so good. He does every voice on point. There is some criticism of him for those first few books where the production value was not as high as it should have been. I don't think all that was his fault. I think just the engineering and, and the sound design and that kind of stuff has improved significantly, which has allowed him to shine in the later books, probably from like book five on. Uh, there are no quibbles from me or for most Dresden Files fans about his narration. He is outstanding. And again, number one, not a surprise to anybody that knows me. Stephen Pacey is, in my mind, the greatest audiobook narrator that has ever lived, the greatest that will ever live. I don't think there's anybody in the game that can touch what he is doing with the First Law series. One of the key aspects of that series uh, that makes it one of my favorites, if you, if you watched my video yesterday, is the humor involved. I think Abercrombie is a brilliant humorist, probably the funniest writer I've ever read in any genre. And part of the skill that Pacey has is the timing and the delivery of this humor. He makes it funnier somehow than it is just on the page by itself. He takes a character like Glockta, Sandan Glockta, one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. And Glockta has been tortured himself. He's now a torturer. But his backstory is that he's missing a bunch of his teeth and stuff, so he speaks with a lisp. So one of the things that Pacey does that elevates these audiobooks is when Glockta is speaking aloud to others, he speaks with the lisp. When Glockta is speaking to himself as part of a monologue, he loses the lisp and just speaks normally because that's how he hears himself. It is one of those crazy details that a lot of really hardcore First Law fans and fans of these audiobooks uh, mention but it is definitely worth mentioning multiple times because that is really, really cool. And again, Pacey is somebody that hasn't really done a ton of narration outside of First Law, and a lot of it I'm not interested in whatsoever. But one of the things that he did narrate was Let the Right One In, uh, which is a translated into English, I believe, from French uh, book, and I think it's a, a vampire story. I've never read it, I've never watched the associated movie with it, but I think that's what it is, is a vampire story of some kind. So I wouldn't mind checking that out, again, probably sometime in October if I do. Um, but budding fantasy authors and people that are breaking into the genre, you should be getting him on the horn and seeing what it's going to cost for him to narrate your books and elevate them to an awesome level. All right, so that's my top 15 audiobook narrators. I hope you have enjoyed the list. I would love to hear some of your favorites. Maybe they are folks that uh, either I haven't listened to yet or maybe just don't particularly appeal to me, which is perfectly fine. I am certain to see some things like uh, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding in the comments, and that's great. I'm glad so many people enjoy their narrations. I don't dislike them. They just certainly wouldn't be anywhere near my top 15 as just one example. Um, but I hope you're all having a great month so far, a great year so far. And until next time, publication order always, my friends.